I, I was just telling you about how now I question everything, including climate change. And what I tell people is that you you can believe that uh, carbon based climate change is real. Mm -hmm. But I know for a fact that the everything that the establishment proposes to fight that is ridiculous. Right. Right now, they're trying to shut down Dutch farms. That's what they're saying right. is the problem. That's, That's the right. problem. You know, the biggest emitter of carbon in the even if you believe that the biggest emitter of carbon in the world is the U.S. military. The next time Greta Thunberg pro protests outside a new military base is the next time I'll believe anything she has to say. Greta Thunberg is a psyop invented by a PR firm. You can keep Dr. Drew over my shoulder. That, that, that's what she is. She'll never go. She went, She's pro-Ukraine war. The biggest emis emission of methane gas in the history of the world was the Nord Stream pipeline that was blown up, right? And who blew yep. that up? The United States, the CIA, and NATO blew that up. Yep. And that's so she's right. not protesting that. She's not protesting war. She's in Invited to come to the WEF and speak at Davos. There's no way that she was actually opposing them that they would be inviting her. So this idea that the problem is, oh, by the way, in California, Doctor, you can't have a gas-powered lawnmower or a gas-powered leaf blower. You know what they didn't outlaw? Private jet travel. One private jet travel emits as much carbon as my car does in my lifetime. They'll never ban. So once they once they ban private jet travel and they cut, they close down eight or John Kerry or Barack Obama or Joe Biden. Say we have to shut down 800 military bases around the world. That's when I'll start believing what they say about climate change, and not until then. Do you think? I I, I agree. I have a slightly different measure, though. My, my, my sort of what I'm looking for is in California. It was something like 10 years of gas-powered vehicles are is completely un uh, eliminating 10 years of gas-powered vehicles is completely undone by one of our forest fires. So if you were actually serious about carbon emission in California, you would be doing forestry management. Huh. That would be your numero uno job. And all these fires we have, they are not because of, they started because of electric companies, but the reason there's such a problem is that we stopped doing forestry management in this state. I grew up in Southern California, and when you looked at the San Gabriel Mountains behind us here, they used to be crisscrossed by these fire breaks. They were all over the place. They eliminated, eliminated even fire breaks because it was interfering with the migration of a mouse. And so now it's all one thing, and they are not cleaning the floors. They are not doing any logging because, well, I mean, again, that's upsetting some owls. And so and then they that's get the what trick. they get. That's so there's the number one. Yeah. Number one is forestry management. Number two, if you're really serious, you'd be getting behind nuclear. Now, interestingly, some of the European countries are. And then number three, if carbon is the issue, Let's come up with an efficient way to carbon scrub. And if you're not doing those three things, then you really, you really don't care. You just, you just want to be aggrieved. That's really what you want. You want so, to push your will on other people. Elon Musk, his big solution, uh, we just highlighted on this show a couple of weeks ago, was that a carbon tax. Isn't it interesting that a guy who wants to sell electric vehicles wants to yeah. put a tax on carbon? Huh. So people driving gas-powered cars who are have to pay for everything but apparently he doesn't have by the way did you know that people do you ever think about it this way that that people who drive electric cars don't contribute to the road con uh upkeep or construction because the gas tax is what funds that so, so if you're no one does well, so if you're, if you're well, driving no, hold on well, a dollar of it is for homelessness too we, yeah. so he's also not interested in that at least in this state so if you're driving an electric car, you're not contributing to the upkeep of the roads. And uh, again, this is all, again, follow the money, the scam. Of course, he said, uh, put a carbon tax on. Don't put a tax on the batteries that he has to use slave labor well, to get. Wait, what Dr. Drew just said in the beginning, which is very interesting, I'd never heard before, is the advertising drugs on TV is just so that they can, they can control, control the media. That's right. Which has been blamed on other people for a long time, by the way. Uh, that principle applies to every single goddamn law or every like carbon tax. Like what's the, what's the controlling the media of that is all you got to do is apply that same principle to every single, this is for your own good law. What you're calling about, you're talking about a, a, a word we don't use maybe enough, which is corruption. <laughs> things have been, it's either corrupt or at least adulterated. That's a kinder word. I've been using the word adulterated a lot because I, I see people that are adulterated don't realize it. Uh, and yeah, it, it's infected everything, uh, and it, and it's and it is about an ensconced elite that is highly adulterated, 
and is not letting go. Well, people don't know. So when people turn on MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, or read the New York Times, or read the Washington Post, they literally think they're getting the news. Now, Noam Chomsky and Ed Herman wrote a book 25, maybe 30 years ago called Manufacturing Consent. Mm -hmm. And there he proved that the media is not there to inform you, to give you the news. It's there to manufacture the consent of what the establishment billionaire class that owns them wants to happen in legislation. We also don't live in a democracy. The idea that January 6th overthrew our democracy or tried to, your democracy was stolen from you by corporations decades and decades ago. And it was proven yeah. by a Princeton study. We don't live in a democracy. We live in an oligarchy because the bottom 80% of wage earners, what they want reflected in legislation never gets reflected in legislation. And only the upper 10%, if 50% of the upper 10% want something, 50% of the time it gets made into legislation. So when you see a session of Congress, do you think they're doing the bidding of workers and students and the elderly and the sick? And in front, they're doing the bidding of the billionaire class that they serve. That's exactly what's had. That's what a session of Congress is, which is why we can send $100 billion to the most corrupt country in Europe at the blink of an eye, and we still won't take care of the homeless people in our own country, which we right. could do that tie, oh, five times over for what we sent to Ukraine. And by the way, Noam Chomsky, the second time that book came up today, and I'm going to say what I meant to say to the last person I was interviewing who brought his name up. The irony is that now Noam Chomsky is part of the elite too. Yes! He's actually part of it. So Noam Chomsky <laughs> was part of the people who are manufacturing yeah. consent for the COVID narrative, which was unbelievable. Yep. Well, he said that they should yep. separate the people who are unvaccinated and when he was asked, how would those from society? They should be separated from society and he yep. equated people who weren't vaccinated with people who want, who wouldn't obey traffic lights and wanted yep. to, and then he said they wanted to kill him. And they said that they should be separated from society. When asked what they should do to get food, he said that's their problem. So that's ah, the, the irony ah, is that, ah. that that's what he said. That's a direct quote. That's verbatim. And so that's that the guy who wrote the book called Manufacturing Consent, of course, is, ends up manufacturing consent. Well, he worked at MIT, which is CIA infected. Uh, so you can't tell me that they're anyway. Well, don't tell me his visits to Epstein Island were, were untoward. And yes. Please. And then they Please, asked Jimmy, him about don't. his trips with Epstein. <laughs> and he said, that's none of your business. I Fair think it enough. is my business. <laughs> I think it actually uh, is. People, people are revealing themselves, aren't they? It, it's people, unfortunately, because the press doesn't report it. Nobody's finding out. Hey, come see us do a live stand-up show. We'll be in Bend, Oregon, Portland, Seattle, Philadelphia, Avenal, New Jersey, Boston, Palm Springs, Ta Stockholm, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Berlin, and London. We're adding a second show in London. The first show sold out. See you there. Mm -hmm.